Hi, we're going to go over some information about two-dimensional arrays here. So, um, what I want to start with is some code I have here that manipulates two-dimensional arrays. And um, we have a number of subroutines. Um, here's where the array is declared. And I've used uh, constants to define the height and the length. The first variable is the number of rows. So that's the height, and here it's three. And the length is the number of columns, that, so I'm calling it length, um, and that's four. So you know the number of rows is the first uh, subscript, and the number of uh, columns is the second one. And it works the same as the cells notation in that respect that we use when we're working with a range in Excel. Okay, now the first little subroutine I have here just prints the array. It uses a um, nested loop. So the outer loop is on J and the inner loop is on K. And because the add item uh, routine creates a new row every time, what we have to do to print our array in, in you know, row by row is to build up a row, print it, build up another row and print it. And that's what we're doing here. So um, for each row, we start with the empty string, and then we go through each column in that row. So you see here, this is using the same J, and we go through all the possible values of K, add the item uh, to the row with the ampersand, and I'm also adding a blank to spread things out a little. And then next K, and then once we finish this loop, we print our row, next J, we go and do the next loop, and we do that um, until all the rows are done. Okay, I have a very similar structure here for initializing. This one's even simpler. And all it does is set every element to zero. So I'm using that because I want to kind of run these over and over and um, show you different manipulations that I can do. So, okay. Um, so I'm calling this subroutine version one. And if we look at it, the structure here is almost exactly the same as the initialized routine. But instead of setting the um, elements to zero, I'm setting them to one. So you notice then all my little routines are set up like this. I initialize the array, um, clear the list box, and print the array. And so that will print the all zeros version. And then I print a blank row to separate. And then I'm printing, I'm doing my um, manipulation, whatever it happens to be, and then I'm printing. Okay, so let's run this and see what it does. I'll go over to Excel, and um, I'm just going to run. Okay, and here you see the original version and the version with all ones. All right. Now, um, here's where... Uh, you can study this by thinking about what happens. And uh, let's look at the next version. So here what I did was, instead of starting with j equal 1, I started with j equal 2. Now what does that mean? It means it won't change the first row. So any element with a 1 in the first position will remain a 0. But I'm changing the rest of the rows. So I'm going from 2 up to height. And now what am I doing with K? Well, I'm only doing from 1 to 2. I'm not doing from 1 to length. So that means only the first two columns will be affected. Now here's where you have a chance to play with things. You have to keep in mind that the maximum value for height is 3, for a row is 3, and the maximum value for a column is 4. But within those limits, you can play around with these and see if you can predict what happens and what the value of each element will be. So let's give it a try here. I'm going to go over, run my macro, and try version 2. And here you can say, see the first row was unchanged, and in the columns I only changed the first two columns. Okay, now here's a kind of um, exercise you can do. Suppose I come back here and I say, um, instead of doing it this way, I'm going to go from 1 to 2 or let's make it one to three on, on the rows. Um, oh, that's all the rows. Make it one to two. So, see if you can predict, write down, 
what this will look like before you actually look at the answer. So you can pause, write down what you think will happen, and then check. So let's go check. So I'm going to run this. So you see here, I did the first two rows, one to two, and the first two columns. You know, um, what if I wanted to do the first two rows, all the columns? Well, okay, first two rows, I'll have J equal one to two. All the columns, I'll go to length. Let's make it all caps. Okay, again, pause. Write down what you think will print, then run it. So let's go do that. Okay, and you see the first two rows, nothing in the third row. Now a good exercise is to think up a rectangular pattern and see if you can adjust the values um, in version two to make that rectangular pattern actually print. And um, you, of course you can change height and length to make them bigger if you want to have more flexibility to play with stuff. So this is a good way to study this, you know, and then see if you can predict what a specific element will be, whether it's zero or one, before you do this. Okay, let's take a look at version three. Now you notice this one does not have a nested loop, although it still works on the two-dimensional array. What it's doing is it's doing um, element JJ. Now I have to be careful here. There's more columns than rows, so I have to be careful and think about the relative values of those uh, so I don't get any um, runtime error by trying to index an element that doesn't exist. Now if you wanted to make rows and columns equal, you wouldn't have to w worry about that. So um, if we look at this, so once again we're setting everything to zero. And then we're going to do um, element JJ each time. So that will be element 1, 1, and 1, 2, and 1, 3. Uh, sorry, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. So um, see if you can write down what I'll print. And let's go try it. So here it is. And you see one element in each row 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. Okay, now I can play around with this as well, of course. So one thing I could do would be to make this be a plus 1. All right, see if you can predict what will happen. And I'm going to run it. See how they shifted over? Now I'd have to be careful again here um, to make sure I don't run out of the space that I've allocated. Um, so one interesting challenge is to try to make the diagonal that goes in the other direction. Uh, not so easy, but you can come up with a formula. Um, play around with it and see if you can do it. Okay. So the idea here is to um, play with this code until you thoroughly understand it. And a good way to test yourself, again, is to make some minor changes in the code and then see if you can predict what the answer will be when it runs. And this will help prepare you for this kind of question on the exam.